charity or that um, we hold a meeting on a day like this. social media as well, uh, social media platforms, I don't know what those are, and uh, so I'm saying this just to add that uh, all of you, and um, there's been a request from uh, journalists who have taken interest in, in the discussion, uh, <coughs> or rather to sit in and listen, um, so there are also uh, within our next, but I thought I should say this. So the agenda is before us, uh, colleagues. Um, <coughs> uh, item number one and item number two, those are uh, main items, uh, preliminaries. And then we have essentially two items, uh, main items in the agenda. is the presentation by the content advisor, <coughs> uh, on the Department of uh, Military Veterans Threat Plan, uh, as well as uh, its uh, uh, annual performance plan and the budgetary allocation thereof. Uh, and then the second main item is a presentation by the researcher on the BOD Threat Plan 2020 to 2025, uh, it's uh, um, a performance plan, as well as uh, its budget allocation uh, for the year uh, in, in review 2020-2021. And that uh, takes us to, to the end of the meeting. The third item that we had uh, put on the agenda uh, was the presentation by the uh, Auditor General, uh, when we had the Auditor General's office on the interim, uh, in the interim report. Uh, yesterday they advised, but because the, meet, the meeting would be uh, live and uh, public, uh, and, and, and that they It would not be right, so advisable, but they will share the content of the uh, document that is yet to be tabled in Parliament. But they did impress that if we need the briefing, that we close the meeting uh, so that uh, they can take us through the content of the AG's uh, interim uh, report. It's interim in the sense that it's likely to change as and when uh, the engagement between the agent's office and the department, um, you know, are able to come to some finality on some of the issues <coughs> that may have been outstanding uh, as it were. So I, I really understood that. Uh, but I did impress that uh, the committee said uh, we really need this uh, interim report uh, right at the beginning of this term. So we you know how the department closed the last uh, <coughs> financial year, that's 2019, uh, 2020. All right. We don't want to wait until uh, it is until it is tabled in, 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 in September. And then uh, discussed uh, in October thereabout uh, to learn about the challenges um, <clears throat> or the audit queries of the previous financial year when it would already be late for the committee to 
uh, intervene. I mean, if, if we get the report, the 2019-2020 report in October, really we'll be left with about three, four months uh, to complete the 2020, 2021 financial year. And you will not have been in a position to, um, you know, um, prioritize the, the audit uh, queries. Um, so, so we said we need this uh, right at the beginning of the of the financial year, so that if they are repeat or repeat uh, uh, what you call audit queries, we are able to place them on the agenda and get the department to answer why they don't get these repeat uh, queries out of their way, so that they move to a clean uh, audit report, as it were. So I'm not uh, uh, removing the item off the agenda completely. It's going to come back um, very soon. I hope we find time where we're able to deal with it, uh, colleagues. So that's the reason why that item um, that was going to be presented by AG's office is no longer uh, on the agenda. <laughs> So, so these presentations will be done in-house by our content advisor and uh, researcher, basically uh, to prepare ourselves for an engagement with the Department of uh, Defense and the Department of Military Veterans, plus the several entities that report to the Department of Defense. We thought we needed this so that um, we adequately, we prepare ourselves adequately for those uh, engagements. Colleagues, uh, so with that, uh, uh, I welcome all of you, and thank you very much, like I said at the beginning, for uh, taking your time out. And uh, Brian, I'm now moving off to item number two, uh, apologies. Are there any apologies? Uh, Chair, we, we, we do have an apology from uh, General Olomisa, who is having a, a challenge in terms of connecting to the meeting. Uh, but IT is at the moment assisting him to, to connect. Uh, he should be joining us uh, any time uh, from now. Yes, no, thank you very much. There's another apology, was it not from Nyonso? Right? Uh, uh, Chair, I've, I've not received uh, any other apology. Uh, I'll, I'll just follow up with Mr. Nyonso to check uh, whereabouts is he. All right. Okay. No, it's fine. Uh, colleagues, no, thank, thank you so much. All right. With that, is it May? Uh, are there any other apologies, colleagues, that you may be aware of? Right. It doesn't look like there's any other. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, who's that? Hello, Mesa. Oh, General, how are you? Welcome. You are back. Oh, I, I, I hear you. You are apologizing on my behalf. I've long been locked in. <laughs> this young man is mischievous, eh? <laughs> so, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, colleagues, can we then quickly go to item number three? And uh, I can see uh, Peter Daniels, our content advisor. Uh, ready to take us through the issues. I'm sure in doing that, you'll also follow on the decisions uh, that the committee uh, took that we must follow up on when we engage with the department. All right, uh, over to you, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair, uh, members. Um, I'll be doing the presentation of the Department of Military Veterans and just focusing <laughs> on selected issues of the strategic plan, the annual performance plan, and then the 2020 budget. Um, Chair, I'll be doing this from the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'm just going to upload it. Is it clear? Yes, it is clear. Okay. Um, as I said, I'll be doing the presentation on the Department of Military Veterans. Um, and the main purpose is basically just to highlight some issues uh, for the committee to consider as part of its oversight responsibility over the department in general, 
and then specifically the annual budgetary allocation and the planning for the next five years. Uh, this is the scope. I'll just start off with a few uh, general remarks. And then from point one to point six is basically uh, the flow and the sequence in the Word document that has been distributed uh, to members. It's much more detailed. And this presentation is basically just a summary of uh, that Word document. It will basically consist of the introduction, uh, issues around uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the department. And then I'll take the committee through the strategic plan, its mandate, strategic focus, and the measuring performance, the annual performance plan. Um, there I'll focus on, on the program specifically, and then also in particular the targets set for the financial year 2020-21. And just briefly look at some of the main cost drivers. Um, that will be followed by a brief look at human resources, and then I'll just summarize with regards to the key aspect of the analysis. Uh, just a general remark or two. Um, firstly, the strategic plans and the annual performance plan of both the two departments, that's the Department of Defense, military veterans, as well as the two entities, um, the Castle Control Board and AMSCO, and the military ombud has been submitted to Parliament timelessly. Um, and in all of these analysis, we will refer to the impact of the COVID-19 on the departments and the entities, and maybe then also pose a question or two around that. Um, and there's a likelihood um, that the annual budgetary allocations uh, to the departments will be adjusted, and because some of these funds need to be released for the fight against the pandemic. And the House Chair has indicated in his writing of the 28th of April um, that these changes or adjustments in the budgets will be dealt with in a separate bill, an adjustment bill, later in the year. And then also we can look at the departments, the entities, and maybe ask them, you know, what kind of measures or plans they have in place, you know, to, 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 to address uh, this issue in case the, the, the budgets are being uh, adjusted, especially if it's adjusted downwards. And also, uh, what kind of internal measures do the departments and the entities have to combat the spread of the disease? Uh, and, and if, um, you know, the lockdown continue, as we are aware from today onwards, we are at level four, you know, what kind of plans do they have to still achieve the mandate? And just to say that, that the analysis covers the strategic plan, the annual performance plan, and the budget allocations. So if one looks at the second page of the analysis, the Word document, I start off there by just referring to the pandemic and the Department of Military Veterans and saying they that currently the government is seized to, to, to address the spread of, of the endemic. Um, we are aware at first it was a compulsory lockdown of 21 days and later extended until yesterday. And then we are now at level level four. Um, if we ever see a limited uh, economic activities being allowed. Um, the point I want to emphasize is that if one looks at the community of military veterans, one we realize that, that many of them are actually forming part of the more marginalized people in our society. Um, and, and, and in the case of, for instance, the United States, I just looked what they did there and how they actually assisted their uh, military veterans. Uh, and what they do is they track the cases of people who have been identified, you know, as being positive. Um, they also have the call centers to assist with questions. And there's also online uh, information available. In addition to that, uh, the U.S. Senate has also passed a Corona Relief Bill of around 60 million rand, specifically then uh, to assist military veterans. Now, as I said earlier, the National Treasury is likely to prioritize those departments that are, you know, in the front line of, of, of fighting uh, the, the, the virus. Uh, typically, department, the National Department of Health the provincial departments of health, um, social development, labor, etc. So there might be a request, you know, for our departments to revise uh, the budgets. But I would strongly say that the uh, Department of Military has, has a strong case, you know, to actually uh, 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 lobby against this in the sense that many of, of the military variants and, and the dependents are very reliant on these uh, 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 benefits, the 11 benefits, 
as I suppose in Section 5 of the Military Veterans Act. And, and, and we also saw that, you know, uh, last year in the, um, the annual report of the department, that there's actually an increase uh, in the number of, of uh, uh, applicants for social relief of distress. Um, last year, uh, the department has given uh, this benefit to around 3,478 uh, 3, military veterans. So indeed, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, requests um, for the department to assist military uh, veterans, especially those who are in dire straits. And then I'm just saying there lastly that the department can use his database uh, basically to prioritize uh, the elderly and those with underlying conditions because um, I think we are well aware that those people that are most at the risk um, to, to, to uh, 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 be infected by uh, this disease, uh, typically the elder populations know that uh, 60 and over chronic respiratory diseases, cancer, etc. And also, pe also people um, who have a compromised immune system. So um, the question then there is, you know, what kind of plans do the department has to basically assist, you know, military veterans, you know, during this period? And then secondly, and, and also importantly, you know, what kind of measures do we have internally to safeguard their own staff uh, against the spread of, 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 of the virus? Uh, for instance, uh, temperature testing, stringent hygiene, sanitizing protocols, the use of masks, uh, etc. And I think those are some of the questions we can pose to the department. Chair, if I can move over to the strategic plan 2020-25. Uh, uh, it basically consists of four main parts. Um, part A is basically the mandate, B is the strategic focus, C is measuring the, perf the performance and these, the technical indicator descriptions. I need to mention, Chair, here that both the strategic plan and the annual uh, performance plan in Part A and part B, part B are basically similar. So that's why I'm not going to repeat it again. It's only when we come to Part C where we find a huge difference, where the strategic plan is, is, is focused on the five-year uh, planning period and the targets that they've set and the money they've located for it, while the annual performance plan then obviously uh, 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 focus on the annual uh, uh, for the financial year 2020-21 um, and then also the, the quarterly uh, targets and, and funds allocated to it. So when it comes to part D, um, the technical indicator uh, descriptions, um, I'm of the opinion that this issue uh, was covered by a briefing that the uh, Auditor General sent us um, because that's that's more on the technical side and they looked at it and they made certain recommendations uh, to to the department of how to actually improve on these technical uh, indicators. So if you agree, Chair, I'm not going to cover Part D, but I will focus on the mandate, the strategic focus, and then measuring the performance. The, then the first part then of the strategic plan Part A, uh, it's basically the mandate of the uh, department and then they refer to uh, the constitution and, and, and typically uh, the sections that they uh, then highlight are those that, that, that relates, you know, to the benefits um, as espoused in, 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 in section 5 of the Military Veterans Act. Like for instance, section 7 is basically the, the Bill of Rights, the introductory paragraph just referring to all the rights in the Bill of Rights. 10 relates typically to human dignity, uh, 25 to, to property, 26 to housing, 27 to health care, food, water and social uh, security, 32 access to information, 33 just administrative action, 195 uh, typically public administration where we derive our party appeal, party appeal principles from, you know, all about the good uh, governance and 217 is basically about uh, procurement. The next thing they do, Chair, is to refer to the legislative mandate and then specifically to the Military Veterans Act 18 of 2001 and other related uh, acts. Um, and, sec and thirdly, they, they also refer to the Military Veterans Benefits Regulations and then the institutional policies. Um, Chair, I think some of the issues that we can actually highlight there 
with regards to, to, to this, um, is, is, is firstly, the amendment to the Act has been coming on for quite some time now, as far as I know, at least for the last uh, four years. And, and we would like to know, you know, how far is this process and when Parliament can actually expect, you know, uh, uh, the amendment bill uh, to be submitted to Parliament. Uh, the next issue there, Chief, relates to the policies. Um, we found in the past that, that, that uh, some of the policies have been uh, approved and some uh, have not been approved. In certain cases, with one state, even the education benefit was distributed, uh, but without actually uh, an approved policy. And we also want to know which policies are being revised. The next issue there, Chair, um, is the subsidized uh, public uh, transport. Um, the department hasn't delivered on, 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 on this. Um, and it's an issue that is very worrying um, because um, this will allow uh, military veterans, you know, to access, you know, the different modes of, of transport. And, and as we are aware, uh, given that the majority of military veterans doesn't have it, you know, that why, you know, they don't have a lot of money, uh, they will struggle to, to actually move to, to, to provincial offices or even to the headquarters uh, in Pretoria. Um, so this access to public uh, uh, transport uh, is actually a, 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 a benefit that I think needs to be rolled out as soon as, as, soon as, as possible. Um, the department also mentioned at the end of this section say that they don't have any relevant court ruling. Um, but there's been an issue about zeal health that has been delivering uh, health service to the Department of the Military Veterans. Jay? Yes. I had lost oh, I you. you ask a question. Yes, I actually lost you for about a minute or so. Uh, but it's fine, you're back. You may continue. Okay. Uh, say, um, and I think uh, uh, General Olomisa uh, is quite aware of this issue of, of Zeal L, who has actually instituted a claim of about 198 million rand against the department. And I think it's maybe prudent for the committee just to follow up on, 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 on the specific issue, what is the progress in that regard. That deals then with part A of the strategic plan. The next uh, section, Chair, um, these will be strategic uh, focus of the department. Um, there they just refer to the vision, which is a dignified, unified, empowered, and self-sufficient military veterans community. Uh, the mission to f facilitate delivery of benefits and coordinate all activities that recognize and entrench the restoration of dignity and appreciation of the contribution of military veterans to our freedom and nation building. The next section deals with the values, and that includes issues such as integrity, compassion, honesty, professionalism, commitment, and accountability. Chair, more important for our purposes, um, especially uh, as we go forward and engage them, it is the situational analysis. And they divided this up into the internal environment and external environment, and they say, that you know the DMV operates within a context that requires an analysis of both internal and external in, in environments, not only to identify internal challenges, but also to leverage opportunities presented by these opportunity environments that can help them to achieve their mandate. Chair, in that section, one would find, and that is on page four of the uh, uh, analysis, um, reference to legislation, regulations, policies, um, the strength of the infrastructure and systems, um, the service delivery model, uh, issues around diversity management, um, and important for us, um, the issue of uh, the independent vote of the department uh, with effect from 1st of April 2020, just a month ago, where the department is actually now operating on vote 26. Because one recall that in the past, the department was basically uh, a sub-program in administration, program one of the Department of Defense, of Defense and then the funds were to, they got tra transferred to them. Now it is transferred directly from National Treasury into this vote, and they have an independent vote going forward. Chair, important is also the democratic nature and the spread of military veterans' population. Uh, they are also referring to around 8.3% of military veterans that must still update the information to ascertain the place of residence. Um, and that, that's why we see later on that there's actually a category of unknown in the table. Um, Chair, the next issue is also very important, and that relates to the issue of the database. 
Um, Chair, you are aware that we've had several meetings, both in the Joint Standing Committee in Defence and in the Portfolio Committee, um, where we've actually engaged the Department on, on, on this issue. Um, and I think it's incumbent on us maybe to just follow up with regards to this, because this is actually key to the to delivery of, of services and benefits to the to the military veterans um, and also for, for planning purposes. Chair, if I can go on there and just say that um, one of the things that we should maybe ask the department, besides this gender and race distribution, provincial spread and the former uh, forces uh, spread of military veterans, is the issue of age, the age distribution of, of military veterans. Because I believe it will be quite key um, to know, you know, what is the spread, um, because it will assist with the, with the planning. For instance, if the majority of or quite a, a big cohort of the military veterans are, 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 are over the age of, of 60, um, I believe that they should maybe be prioritized, for instance, benefits such as health and, and, and such as, 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 as housing. The next issue say, relates to the military skills development system uh, uh, members. Um, and we just want to know exactly how are they being accommodated um, within the, milita the, the military veterans uh, database. Because our understanding it is ex that, that they should actually be moved to uh, the reserve force rather to the, the, the military uh, veterans. And then, Chair, I think it's also important that we follow up on this 8.3% of, of um, military veterans that need to update uh, the, the information. Um, also important here uh, on page five of, of, of the analysis uh, is where the database actually indicate, you know, um, the, the percentage of statutory forces and the percentage of non-statutory for forces. Um, and according to the department, um, the non or former non-statutory forces account for around 76%, while the former non-statutory forces account for around 20%. And the argument has been made in the past by both the ministry and the department um, that given our, our, our history, it is likely that those members of the statutory forces would have received uh, many of these benefits while in service or just when, when they retired. And, and, and that uh, the non-statutory forces were not in, 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 in that position. So therefore, uh, um, the department also states um, there is actually uh, an urgent uh, intervention required to, to address uh, this uh, imbalance and, and or, or rather to have a slant or bias towards uh, uh, giving uh, a benefits to non statutory forces. Chair, if I can move on. Um, that was the internal uh, environmental ana analysis. Um, the second part, Chair, deals with the external environmental uh, analysis of the department. Um, and here yeah, they are also referring to the World Bank, um, the, the IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund, um, and their predictions with regards to the economic growth uh, in Africa and then also in South Africa. And where they're basically saying that the growth will, will, will slow down. Um, and if the growth, the economic growth slows down, it will also have an impact you know, on the South African economy and the, the uh, ability of the, the, of, of the government, national treasury, to actually uh, fund, you know, the various departments, you know, according to, to their wishes. Um, I'm just saying there that, 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 that all the departments can actually then expect a sort of cut. And we've seen this, you know, the austerity measures that have been implemented over the years, you know, to the various uh, uh, departments, especially when it comes to the salary bill, um, you know, the, that percentage of the overall budget of, of, of departments with national strategy actually insisted that they should be cut. Um, an important issue, Chair, is the Military Veterans Task Team report. Um, I'm not aware that we've seen this report, um, and the importance of that is that they say that uh, it actually provides a guiding blueprint for service delivery. Um, and it's looking also at the more cost-effective ways to deliver on, on, on the mandate. Um, and, and I do think, Chair, that maybe um, we should request them to come and, and, and present 
uh, this report so that we can engage them. And maybe in that way, we can also assist them to address some of the challenges that they have, you know, achieving the targets. Um, the other issue that they refer to is that they are working very hard to integrate military veterans into communities. And that's why they have this one district approach where they emphasize a strategic public-private partnerships, um, which will be critical to advance uh, uh, this issue. Um, so the other issue they are referring is the issue that we've dealt with in the uh, committee before um, with the Department of Defense, and there's this whole uh, issue of cybersecurity. And, and we just asked them, you know, what kind of challenges did they have in this regard? You know, did CETA, you know, the state information technical agency assist them uh, with this. Uh, uh, so what is the, the, the issues there? Um, an important issue is also that they say that in line with chapter 10, you know, public administration, good administration, um, good governance and so on, that they are also adhering to the philosophy, the principles and practice and the outcomes of the King uh, 4 report. Uh, the other issue is that they've also instituted anti-corruption and anti-fraud initiatives uh, in the department, just to make sure that the department is not hampered uh, uh, by this in the execution of, of, of the attempt the mandate. Um, Chair, one of the questions we ask here is, is this whole issue of the, <clears throat> the one district uh, 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 approach. And I just want to know, how does it actually relate um, 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 to uh, 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 the, the intergovernmental relations? Because Chair would be aware that in the past, um, the department actually had problems, you know, with delivering, especially, for instance, housing, um, where there was a lack of uh, 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 land, for instance, available for, for, for housing. Um, and some uh, provinces and some municipalities didn't quite uh, uh, cooperate. So we just want to know um, how this thing is actually going to uh, uh, pan out, um, especially with regards to the intergovernment uh, uh, relations function. Um, Chair, um, the next issue that I want to uh, briefly refer to is the stakeholder analysis that is on page 8 of the um, analysis um, and where the department basically refers to various uh, departments and entities with which they are dealing and I, I just want to highlight a few internally in the department itself um, and that's the first one is the South African National Military Veterans Association. Um, and the question is just what is the latest with regards to, 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 to Sanwa? Um, and especially what kind of role does it play to verify the status of, 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 of military veterans against the background of the briefing that we had uh, both in the joint and in the PC uh, uh, of the challenges that, that the department has with, you know, with verifying uh, military veterans. Um, so what role, you know, uh, uh, does the uh, Sanwa actually play to assist uh, the department? Chair, the other two that I'm referring to is the Appeals Board and the Advisory Council of the department as espoused uh, uh, in, in, in the Act. And I'm just asking, the, you know, when do the terms uh, come to an end? And are all the positions on these structures full? Um, and can the department, for instance, provide us with a list you know, of, of members serving on, on, on these uh, structures, you know, the race and gender, um, in, 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 uh, specifically against the background that the DMV says that they want to promote inclusivity, they want to have a diverse uh, community. Um, there was also an issue raised, Chair, with regards to African military health services, um, and they have identified this risk of, of, of duplication of, of, of services by SAMS. Um, and they say that they are alerting us to this because they are scared that they might be double uh, dipping, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in this regard. So the question is just, you know, how far, what, what is the current status of this and how are they planning to, to, to address this? Chair, uh, one of the main issues with regards to the department and often related to the underperformance and underspending relates to the number of vacancies. And vacancies, Chair, specifically in the top echelon of the department. Um, we received recently a document from the AG. He says that the current key vacant positions are that of the accounting officer, the DG, which has been vacant since the 1st of August 2015. The Deputy Director General Socioeconomic Support, vacant 
since January 27, the Deputy Director General Corporate Service vacant per, uh, from the 1st of, of September uh, 20, 2019. And obviously, Chair, um, um, on this impact, you know, on, on the sort of leadership, you know, and guidance that, that, that the department can have, you know, if, if, if we have so many vacancies, and especially in, in, in the top echelon of the department, uh, hampering uh, 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 the, the delivery of services. So another important issue is that the department often refers to them planning to have a well-structured staff organization. And in, in this regard, one can pose the question, what happened to the recommendations of the skills audit? They briefed us uh, around uh, the skills audit, um, what they've done, uh, the, con uh, the consultants that they have appointed, um, but we haven't heard much further from the recommendations of the skills audit. Um, and this is important uh, because neither the strategic plan nor the annual performance plan, uh, as far as I could find, say, uh, mention the skills audit. Um, and I think this is maybe an issue that we need to follow up. The next issue I want to move over to is the strategic plan. Um, measuring uh, uh, performance, um, one will also find that on page 9 of the analysis. Um, so I'll, I'll skip uh, 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 um, the institutional performance information section, but I want to focus here, if you allow me, to, to, to focus on the planned performance over the five-year planning period. And, and, and this is important um, because um, here on, 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 on page nine of, of the analysis. Um, it relates to the priorities that the department plans to achieve over the next five years. Um, it starts off with the executive authorities, the minister's priorities, um, and she lists around uh, six uh, priorities that they what she wants the department uh, to achieve. Um, but more important for our purposes is the other two, and that is the National Development Plan, Vision 20, 2030, um, and, 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 and how uh, the, the, the department see themselves contributing to the NDP um, and, and the various uh, specific chapters, like Chapter 13, uh, Building a Capable and Developmental State, Chapter 14, uh, Fighting Corruption, Chapter 9, Improving Education, Training and Innovation, Chapter 10, Promoting Health, 3, uh, the Economy and Employment, and, and, and so forth. Yeah? Um, and then also with regards to the medium term strategic framework uh, priorities, there are about uh, six priorities um, that the department says they are going to, 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 to contribute to. Chair, this, this is important for us because um, on a quarterly uh, basis and even on an, an annual basis, the department has to come back to us and report to us what were their contributions uh, to these three sets of, 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 of priorities. Um, and then we also have to indicate in our reports uh, later on, you know, um, whether we feel, you know, that they've uh, contributed, achieved the, 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 the target that they've set for themselves with regards to this, um, and that the money has been well spent because they address uh, some of these uh, priorities. Chair, the, the, the next issue is uh, the key risk and mitigation. Um, this is also on page 10 of the analysis. Um, and, and, and this is important for us because um, it gives the department a chance to have an inward-looking approach and saying, but what are our weaknesses? You know, where do we, and what are the threats? Um, and they identified various uh, uh, risks there, uh, about uh, six of them. Um, and the first one there is inadequate, integrated, internal, external business system. And the risk mitigation there is development of an integrated business system. The next one is instability in strategic uh, leadership, uh, something that I referred to earlier, and they say they will implement the approved recruitment plan. And then, say, further on it, it goes, but another important one to highlight there is inadequate legislative and regulatory and policy. Um, and then they say what they want to do is to introduce amendments to the Military Veterans Act. They want to align the Military Veterans Benefit Regulations uh, to the Act, and they also want to develop policies in line with the amendment act. Um, the other issue that they are referring to is an inappropriate uh, organizational culture. 
And the way they plan to mitigate this is to introduce organizational change management uh, processes. The next one, Chair, uh, um, and, and also very important, especially with regards to access um, by military veterans and independent student department, is an ineffective and inefficient stakeholder management and, and, and strategy. And their mitigation there is uh, to develop and implement the stakeholder um, management strategy. Chair, one of the targets that the department had in, in the past, and, and, and currently we can't find it in, in the two uh, documents, the two plans, was uh, they touted this high impact communication, marketing, and, and strategy and, and, and plan. So the question is, if they don't have a problem with you know communicating with, with their stakeholders, what went wrong with, with, with this uh, uh, high uh, impact communication, marketing, and strategy plan? But quite a bit of money was allocated to this. So it seems to me that, 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 that somewhere something went wrong um, that they still have the specific risk. Uh, the other issue, Chair, is um, just to ask them, you know, um, they are saying that they have an inappropriate organizational uh, 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 culture um, and they want everybody to feel welcome, you know, in the department. That's why there's a focus on diversity management. And, and I think maybe it behoves the committee to just have a look at this diversity management strategy or plan of this that they tell us what are they actually uh, doing, Chair. Um, Chair, um, in the last uh, APP uh, of 2019, um, there was a risk identified, and they call it the compromised data base integrity and security uh, as a risk, and one of the mitigation strategies was to roll out and full implementation of the eDMV ele electronic integrated system and amendment of the military. This risk is not currently uh, part of the risk uh, assessment. Uh, but given the problems that, 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 that the department has with the uh, database, um, maybe, maybe it's incumbent on us to maybe ask them what exactly is, 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 is going on. Is the database now secured um, from a tax or from, 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 from outside? Um, the last one there, Chair, is just something that I mentioned earlier. And uh, the fact that they don't mention social relief of the stress at all. Um, and the last time we heard from them, they said that they are going to try and institutionalize that. And, 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 and hopefully, uh, when the amendment act comes out, uh, we'll also see that, that the social relief of the stress is also part of, of, of the, the amendments that come in. One also take notice of, of the fact that social relief of the stress is primarily a function of, of, of the Department of, of, of Social Development, and that only certain functions of this benefit will be delegated to the Department of Military Veterans, but we will follow up on that as we go along, Chair. Um, Chair, um, something that I referred to earlier is this uh, one district uh, 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 approach that the Department is, is referring to, and, and we just asked the question there, you know, exactly how does all these fit together, you know, the whole notion of the new organizational structure uh, that, that they want to have, the service delivery model and this uh, district development model, just how it all uh, fits together. Okay, the next issue that I want to move to over it is basically the annual performance plan of the department. And if you allow me, Chair, um, I, will, I will focus here mainly on the targets uh, of, of the DMV, you know, over the financial year because many of, of, of the financial issues will come out uh, um, um, while we'll mention it in, in, in passing. So if one looks at, 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 at the table currently in, 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 in front of us, um, we can see that the department's allocation is around 683 uh, uh, million for this financial year. It moves to around 711 20 for 2021, 22, and then to um, 735 million for 2022 to 23. Um, and, and an important year is, is just to indicate um, that the main service delivery uh, program is the second program, namely socioeconomic support. And the majority of, of, of the budget, uh, 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 more than half, uh, goes towards uh, this because a uh, chair will recall that, that the majority of, of benefits are basically. Uh, 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 
delivered from 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 this this program. And I think it would be incumbent on us to just to, to to follow, you know, their spending on especially uh, the second and the third program because those are the two main service delivery uh, uh, program. Um, and, and and also, chair, uh, given the department's uh, uh, history of 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 underspending, um, you know, I think it is incumbent that we we follow throughout the year, you know, how do they actually uh, uh, are they actually spending their funds. The next one, it, it is basically to indicate um, the percentages of the total budget of the three programs. And there we can see in, in 2019-20, it was around 55.99%. Um, that uh, uh, moved up to around 58.77%. Um, and you can see the, the other two programs are about uh, around 20, 21-22%. One looks at the uh, real and, and, and nominal uh, increases. Uh, I, I mean, here yeah, I will focus mostly on, on the real increases because that uh, also accommodates uh, uh, the inflation. Uh, one will note um, that overall the department, um, say there was an increase in the budget of 0.25% in, 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 in the real terms. Um, and the biggest uh, increase uh, was with regards to program two, socioeconomic uh, support, where we saw a nominal uh, percentage increase of 9.85%, and then a real percentage increase um, of 5.2%. Um, and yes, uh, it's concerning uh, that both in, 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 in nominal and in real terms, um, the two other programs, program one administration and program two empowerment and stakeholding, they've actually uh, had a decrease uh, in, in the budget. Chair, um, as I said, uh, if you allow me, I'll, I'll focus mostly on the targets um, that the department has set for themselves with regards to uh, the programs. And here, um, the program one, um, we see that um, they list, for instance, an unqualified uh, audit opinion um, throughout from this year to the outliner year 2022-2023. Um, and the question is just, why don't they aspire for a clean audit? Um, are they satisfied just to have an unqualified uh, uh, audit uh, opinion? The next one is also with regards to the payment or the percentage of legitimate invoices paid within 30 days. Um, if one notes, um, you know, how they moved on from 2016 um, to 2019-20, uh, how they actually increased. First it was 67%, then 76%, 79%, and uh, this hasn't been confirmed yet, and we'll see that when we receive the annual report for 2019-20, um, but they, they estimate that the performance is around 90%. Now, if, if, if that's the case, and seeing the trend that has been, you know, there in, in, in the past, um, one we'll just ask, but, but why don't they actually try to incrementally then increase, you know, the percentage of legitimate invoices paid um, you know, within the 30 days. Um, so the next issue just relates to an approved uh, ICT uh, strategy, and we see for this year they are planning to have it improved, and then over to the next two years, uh, it's about uh, implementation. Uh, the next one relates to approved human resources strategy. Um, they hope to approve it in this year, and then the next two years, um, they will then uh, implement it. But I think this uh, relates to um, also to the issue of having the organizational structure approved. Remember, Che, uh, they've applied, you know, uh, uh, and they've liaised with National Treasury as well as Department of Public uh, Service and Administration to actually, you know, uh, change their uh, organizational structure to align it more with their mandate, you know, with their budget and, 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 and so forth. Chair, what I'm also saying is, um, if we members goes through um, the, the word document, they will find that in the, there's also a reference to the nominal and the real increases and decreases within the budget. <coughs> the next issue, Chair, is program two. Um, and this slide is, is slightly busy. Uh, but it's understandable well, because this program uh, delivers around 80% and also receives around 80% of the budget 
uh, of the DMV. Um, and the first one there um, relates to the number of military veterans who are verified, captured under National Military Veterans Day, something that I referred to earlier. And we can see then for, for, for this year, yeah, they plan to uh, verify and capture around 5,325 military veterans year after that 5,000 as well as the next year. The next issue is with regards to newly built houses per year. Um, and, and this is one of the problematic areas for the department. Um, from the year 2016 to 2017 to 2019, 16, um, the target was actually 1,000 houses uh, to be built uh, uh, for military veterans. And here one can see um, they, they've, they've underperformed um, to a huge extent on, on, on delivery of houses. And I think they then realized um, that they need to change uh, this to a more realistic uh, 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 target. Uh, hence, they have a target of 710 for the next three years from this year until the year 2022 uh, to 23. Um, houses, is, as I said earlier, it's one of the important uh, uh, benefits, especially for, for aging or older military veterans. And I think um, this is an issue that we need to follow up to. Let's say, um, the next one is the number of military veterans approved and provided with compensation uh, benefit. Last year, um, it was a new indicator, and this year, uh, they plan, uh, uh, for the last year, they actually plan to, to achieve around 300, and then later on for this year, 200, and then 200, and then 100. I'm sure important is also uh, this issue of approved uh, um, military veterans provided with a uh, pension benefit. As we check, check and see, they, um, it is basically uh, a new policy that is being developed. Um, so they developed it last year, and they indicated that they also piloted it last year. Um, and for this year, they have a target of 200, um, then 350, and then later on 450. One of the questions one can ask here is, is, is whether this was in close uh, uh, collaboration with National Treasury and then specifically the Government Pension Administrative uh, Agency, because they are also, to my mind, they, they are primarily responsible, you know, for, for managing uh, a pension. So this may be just an issue that we need to, to, to follow up. But I think uh, this target chair is, 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 is very welcome because many military veterans have been complaining about the lack you know, of, 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 of uh, sustainable, if I can put it that way, uh, a, a, a pension. The next one is, is a public uh, subsidized public transport. Um, and here one can see that last year they've actually developed it and also piloted it. And then this year they plan um, to, to, to give access to around 600, uh, next year 900, and the year after that 1,200 military veterans, you know, to provide them with subsidized public uh, transport. So given that this is the first year that will be uh, the rollout of this, um, I was wondering whether this isn't a bit uh, ambitious, and, and, unless they've had a very successful piloting scheme last year, and they can inform us of that, um, because uh, 600 is, is, is quite a, a large number um, if they only piloted last year. Um, because I'm reminded um, that, that in the past, we actually struggled to get all the transport-related uh, entities, uh, state-owned entities, um, um, to actually come and report to us you know, what is the, the progress and various excuses have been made uh, by those uh, entities, you know, why they didn't actually come to the party to, to deliver on, 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 on this benefit. And given that many of our military veterans are staying in the rural areas, I think it's maybe incumbent on us to, 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 to follow up on this, this issue to, to allow members or military veterans uh, access to this uh, subsidized public transport. So the next one is the bursaries. Um, and this has been a vexing issue, uh, Chair. Um, one can see um, in 2016 17, it was around 7,146. It moved to 7,702. And then the peak there in 2018 19, about uh, 11,326. And they project then for, 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 for the last financial year, it would be around 7,466. And after that, um, they have a constant figure of 7,400. Uh, a bursary that would be removed. This is a, quite a challenging uh, target chair um, because what we found in, in the past that the department would, would often move funds or unused funds or underspending 
of, of in, in other programs use those funds to move towards uh, the bursary's uh, 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 allocation. Um, and we've been concerned about that because it means, you know, then that other benefits are not being delivered equally or delivered as, as, as being planned. And I think this is an issue um, that, that, that needs to be follow up, Chair. Um, Chair, the, 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 the next one there, it is just access to um, your care services. Um, and, and here, one is actually uh, um, pleasantly surprised um, by the plans of the department in the sense um, that they are incrementally increasing it. Um, because as I said earlier, I do believe that the majority of our military veterans are aged, um, you know, elderly, and, and they need this kind of, of health care access. And one can see there from 2016-17, it was around 15,000, moved to 16,000 next year, 17,000. And for last year, they project it was around 18,000, and then they will incrementally uh, uh, increase. Um, yesterday, there, was, there were problems with regards to that. Not all military veterans, for instance, where they, where we stayed close to um, military hospitals uh, in those problems, those three problems where are military hospitals or where they are, are sick base, military sick base, um, you know, uh, or did always had access to that because they had problems with the health card. But I think that's an issue that the committee will likely also uh, uh, follow up to. Um, Chair, if I can move over. Five minutes to go. Chair? Five minutes remaining. Right, Chair. Um, the next one, Chair, it is the uh, performance targets for Program 3. Um, they just start with the mobilization activities. Uh, it's a new indicator last year, and then they plan 9, 10, and 12 for the following three years. Um, something that is very heartening is the approval of burial claims uh, for a paid within 30 days. Um, you can see there the project they will uh, keep on uh, uh, paying it within 100% uh, within 30 days. Um, um, the other one, Chair, and, and this is a main concern, is with regards to skill development programs. And one can note the, the various uh, uh, figures. But one of the questions that's being asked with regards to this is that the rationale behind skills development and training and even education to an extent um, should be to make the uh, 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 military veteran or, or their dependents less reliant on the department um, for them to get gainful employment out somewhere else. Um, and even for them to be totally independent from from the department, and and, and what doesn't get an uh, impression, you know, that the department is focusing on this, you know, to to ensure, you know, that these skills development interventions, you know, actually uh, 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 is used to the extent that it can be used, you know, for military veterans to get a gainful employment. Um, uh, Chair, I'll move over to, to to the next one, and it's just basically the main cost drivers. And there one can see, you know, the main focus, you know, is on, on housing, education, training, skill development, access to the health care, um, and then uh, also the implementing of the initiatives to improve the delivery of this. And then there are various others uh, outlined there, Chair. But important for me, Chair, is for instance, there um, in, in, in program one, we see that around 68.9 million has been allocated for strategic planning, policy development, and M&E programs. Um, and, and yet, there are problems with, 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 with finalizing, revising you know, policies, uh, strategies in the department. Um, and then the next question Jay, is just, what kind of services are these uh, contractors actually delivering to the department? And in the past, uh, s and travel and the substance has been a, compass, uh, a concern. So maybe it's something that could also be follow up. And then just the increase you know, in software and other tangible assets from 1.1 mil million last year to around 2.8 million. Um, Chair, uh, in brief, this is the outline of the human resources. Um, the first section we see there, it's basically in um, the APP, uh, but more important for me is that uh, a third bullet there, which shows that around 38%, that's 10 of the 26 vacancies, are at salary levels level to 16. And that basically emphasized the need to fill the positions at the top end of, of, of the organization. Um, Chair, and then just related to that is just what progress have been done uh, or been made to fill these vacancies. Chair, the next three slides is basically uh, re-emphasizing of what they said previously. 
Um, and given that I'm now running out of time, I'll just uh, highlight some of these general issues is the COVID-19. What are the department doing to assist military veterans? And what are the internal measures, you know, to protect, you know, uh, the members? Uh, something that I referred to a few times is the amendments of the act um, and, and why, you know, uh, 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 or are they actually considering including uh, SRD, social relief of distress benefit uh, in these uh, amendments. The next one is just a link between the organizational structure, the service delivery model and the one district model. Um, and also, you also want to know what is the latest on the recommendations on the skills audit. Um, and then progress made with the mitigation strategies, um, and then also issues I referred to earlier as, as this ineffective and inefficient stakeholder management strategy. Um, budgetary issues, the money will increase overall in the budget. Um, and an issue uh, that I maybe haven't highlighted that much yet, it is that last year only 64.3% of this sub-program has been spent. And this is the sub-program that actually relates the first sub-program in uh, empowerment and stakeholder program three. Um, so only 64.3% of the budget have been used. And, and, and we are aware, Chair, that the department doesn't have a national footprint. They are absent. They don't have provincial offices in certain provinces. And, and, and yet there was, there was an understanding in that. And it's maybe something that we need to uh, follow up. And that, another issue that I didn't uh, uh, emphasize enough, Chair, is this whole issue of the effectiveness of the internal uh, audit system. Remember, Chair, this is our early internal uh, early warning system. Um, it wasn't stuffed uh, properly. Um, and they even had a, a shift of 1.4 million <coughs> from this one. The next one is something uh, that I referred to earlier is ZILL. What is the latest on that? And then also sub program three, the Harris Memorial, Burials Honors. Um, what is the reason for the decrease? Chair, in conclusion, it's just the performance issues. What is the status of the institutional policies? Why can't they aim for uh, a clean audit? Um, the national databases, it needs to be finalized um, because the committees have given the deadlines in the past. Um, around 8.3% of military veterans um, need to update the information. What is the latest on that? Um, the ambitious target of 600 military veterans with regards to subsidized public transport, the filling of vacancies, the perpetual underperforming with regards to the housing target, and then lastly, Chair, is something I mentioned earlier, it is the establishment of provincial offices. Chair, I'm done. Thank you. Thank uh, Peter. Thank you so much for the, the presentation. Very comprehensive. And um, there will be no need for, for the department to present again uh, <laughs> soon. Uh, make this presentation. Maybe it would be an occasion for us to, you know, uh, engage with the departments, uh, ask questions, and, uh, of, and, 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 and and have questions, and then uh, make a, a, a findings, uh, you know, as it were. Now, colleagues, um, I don't know. Can I just take just questions of clarity? I, I'm allocating five minutes. Uh, because um, it's just to for for clear as well for areas where they were not clear. Uh, are there any questions, colleagues? Five minutes for that. Yes, so, I've got a question, Olomisa. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm over to you, General. Uh, thank you, Chairperson and colleagues. And uh, indeed, this was a a good presentation. However, I'll just just want to find out as to whether these figures are realistic, given that uh, we are still going to be expected uh, to release some funds to central fund or to national treasure. Uh, yes, they will be realistic if the Department of Defense funds are ring fenced, but I'm not getting that impression so far. So would he, would somebody clarify out that? And lastly, uh, I'm wearing another hat here in the Eastern Cape, busy distributing uh, uh, PPE as well as uh, food. So I won't be long in the in this session because I've lined up 
some uh, potential uh, business people to support that pro that that, that uh, process. Just on the 27th of this month, uh, I mean of April, we distributed TP PPE uh, material to no less than 32 hospitals here in the Eastern Cape to the foundation I'm chairing, the Champions of Environment Foundation. So I would ask to be excused therefore, sir. Yeah, thanks, General. It's for the, a good cause. Uh, we will be releasing you. Let me just ask the, uh, Peter to deal with that so that you can... Uh, yes, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Peter, just deal with that before I move on. Uh, Chair, right in the beginning, Yes, uh, of the presentation, I, I actually said, you know, um, National Treasury will obviously prioritize, you know, this, those departments that are in the front line of fighting the pandemic. Uh, so there might be a possibility that other departments will be asked to adjust, that are not in the front line, will be asked to adjust uh, 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 the, the budgets maybe downwards. But I... They have these underlying conditions and so forth. So I, I think it's, I think it's a, a commitment under, 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 to assist if that will uh, happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, General. We'll Thanks, General. Watch, we will watch thank you, development, development in that regard with an hawkish eye. eye. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you so much. much. Uh, okay, you, you may release, uh, you, you, you may, uh, you are released, uh, General. Uh, thank you. Thanks thank so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I've got just two quick questions, Chair. Uh, just for clarity. Uh, Comrade Peter, or oh, Honor, uh, Peter, sorry. <laughs> uh, has the department been able to explain the reason why there are so many vacancies at senior level? of the department. And secondly, which is the last question, the issue, the issue of, of underperformance in the provision of shelter for military veterans. I think it's a cause for concern. What is the department advancing as the reasons as well in terms of their underperformance? They've got set targets, but they perform way under those targets. Thanks, 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 Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, any other colleagues? All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure whether. Well, it's 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 clarification, but I'm not sure whether this uh, doesn't belong to the department itself. But let me just try and 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 uh, and uh, clarify. Maybe uh, Peter, that side, might be able to share some light. Uh, he said something about the alignment, aligning regulations to the act. Uh, and I got a bit interested in, in what that actually means. It means the regulations were not aligned. Uh, maybe to get an example of uh, how that happens and... Uh, yeah, maybe it belongs to the department, but at least just to give me an idea or how do you have regulations that, or is it because the department started working before the regulate, I mean, before legislation was, was enacted or whatever the question might be. And one other interesting factor is diversity management. Just to clarify, uh, diversity management, is it within the department? What diversity are we talking about here? Just to clarify that. I mean, I, I've got some other questions, but I think this uh, belongs to the department itself. Uh, social relief of distress, how it works with social, the department of social department, I mean, social development, well, the transport subsidy and so and so on and so on. 
But this too, just to clarify the alignment of regulations to the act and diversity of, I mean, diversity management. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Honorable Make. Any other? I think that takes care of all the uh, questions and comments. Peter, uh, you just deal with, with those that you think are comfortable to deal with them, and then the rest will leave it to the department. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, with regards to the first questions of uh, possible reasons um, for the filling of, 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 of vacancies, I, relate, I think it relates also to the question of Mr. Mark and his, his second question, diversity management. Um, one found that, 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 that often um, top officials would be employed. They like the DDG, uh, social economic support, would be employed. And, 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 and within a few months, he would, he would leave uh, the department. Um, so there was quite a bit of turnover with regards to, 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 to personnel. Um, and I think that is why they are emphasizing diversity management within the department. Um, because in, in, in the annual performance and in the strategic plan, they say they want if all the employees to feel comfortable at home, uh, uh, um, you know, notwithstanding their race, religion, et cetera. Um, and obviously the question would be why would they say something like that? You know, what went wrong? So I think there was a, 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 a challenge within the department with regards to the accommodation, you know, of, of all, all the people of, of, of South Africa. And that might be one of the reasons, you know, that the high turnover rate and the lack of proper diversity management within the department that they are struggling to fill the positions here. Um, with regards to um, the next one, the underperformance um, of, of the department, I think there are, are various reasons. But 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 I think this, the central reason, to my mind, is 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 the lack of coordination and the lack of cooperation from the other uh, levels of government, like provincial, like the municipalities, um, and, and and that is why one see here uh, an emphasis on the intergovernmental relations framework, you know, to address this issue, um, because not all uh, provinces are, are you know similarly dedicated you know, to assist with the delivering of, 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 of services. That's why one see also this one district uh, model. Uh, that's why we also see this emphasis on strategic public partner, uh, pr pr partnerships. Um, and, and so I think uh, that is, one, to my mind, one of the, the, the biggest problems. The other thing is, is, is a, a misalignment with regards to the organizational structure, the mandate, and the services that need to be delivered. Um, so I think, Chair, briefly, that might be some of the causes of, of, of the lack of, 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 of performance. Um, when it comes to the alignment between the regulations uh, uh, in the Act, the way I understand that the Act has been passed and later on the regulations followed, and within the regulations, there were also the various means tests for the various uh, 11 benefits uh, uh, in, 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 in the department. I think what, what, what they're trying to do um, is, for instance, accommodate widows and orphans in, in the uh, uh, presentation, not in the presentation, in the Word document. I, for instance, make reference um, to them referring to widows and orphans. And shouldn't, for instance, housing be dedicated to them? Um, so how do they need to address that? I think most probably they have to amend the act first. And then it, it will have to go to the, 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 the regulations. That must be amended. and what. The other issue is for instance also how do you uh, prioritize disabled for housing? You know, once you prioritize them, then, you know, uh, the relevant kind of houses need to be built for them. Um, and also, for instance, the social relief of, 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 of the stress, that benefit is, is near, not being catered for in the budget, not in the budget, but in the demanding of the, the, the department. It was an executive authority directive to address it. So, Chair, I, I suspect that you know, once they amend the act, then the regulations need to follow to, to, to address some of these current uh, gaps uh, uh, in the partnership. Thank you. Thank you,
So, so that structure will need to be reviewed so that they align it to, to the act. Uh, it was mentioned before, and it's been mentioned in the document, that the, the structure came before the act itself. It had about 409 posts, uh, you know, initially. Treasurer so said, where do you get these 409 posts for? What are the assumptions for you to get to this? Uh, eventually, it was reduced to 169 posts. But now, uh, Peter is telling us uh, that in the report, they are saying uh, only 144 of those uh, are filled on a permanent basis. And uh, the rest is filled by uh, contract staff, uh, 63 contract staff, uh, 28 by the interns. That brings the post to 261. You can see the mismatch. Uh, they wanted they wanted 49. They were given uh, uh, 160, 169, but they have 260, 61 posts. So it means that there is a problem uh, with 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 the structure itself. And uh, the less I say about the vacancies that leading to people acting, the better for now. Only the department can fill us in, 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 in as far as that. I think it talks to the question of diversity management that uh, uh, the colleague was talking about. Maybe we'll just leave that, uh, leave it at that for now, uh, colleagues. Uh, only the department. Yes, permission. All right, colleagues. I think we are there. We're done with uh, 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 this uh, uh, DMV. Thank you very much for this. And then let me quickly move off to the Department of uh, uh, Defense and then invite uh, uh, Dr. Yance, Velen Yance from Rensberg to take the platform and, and take us through our research. Thank you very much, Chair um, and honorable members. Uh, I'll go through the annual performance plan and uh, the budget of the uh, Department of Defense. I would just like to share the PowerPoint. Um, is it currently visible to you on your side? Is the PowerPoint visible on your side? Yes, thank yeah. you, Valera. Yes, thank you. yes, you can see. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair and Honorable Members, and also to those uh, who joined from outside of Parliament for this presentation. Um, the aim of this presentation is merely to, to highlight the key aspects that is contained in the analysis document that was distrib uh, distributed to members um, uh, a few weeks ago and also yesterday in Brian's email. So I'll run through this, the key issues that are highlighted in that document. Um, this is just a synopsis of the analysis. So I really urge members to, to work page by page through that document. Um, within this presentation, you will see at the top right hand of the of the screen, uh, there's a small uh, orange box um, that contains the relevant page numbers in the analysis document. Uh, so for cross-referencing, you can utilize that. So in terms of the, uh, the starting point for this presentation, um, I'd like to jump in with the, uh, with the major question going forward. So the annual performance plan and budget of the Department of Defense looks at the forthcoming year, the current year that we are already in. Uh, it looks at 2020-21. So given the current topic uh, and the questions that it brings of COVID-19, um, the, the big question is how will this impact the Department of Defense's budget? And uh, the first bullet there is it's, going to give the answers at the later stage. Uh, we will have the, an adjusted budget at some point uh, to address the COVID-19 requirements. But uh, so, so until then, this is the budget that we have to work uh, work with, the original Department of Defense budget. But there's already questions that can be asked uh, going forward. And some of them are, that I could, could think of that might impact on the budget going forward and on the, on the annual performance plan of the department include aspects such as the DOD spending trends. Um, we're likely, as confirmed by National Treasury uh, and the Reserve Bank, we're likely to see an economic downturn. 
um, and there will then be less taxes collected, and this will put increasing pressure on the public wage bill. And the Department of Defense is one of those departments that have a, a very high ratio of spending in terms of its compensation of employees. This was a pre-COVID problem already, and this will become an increasingly more difficult problem to solve in the uh, in the future, given the constraints of the COVID-19 virus and the economic impact thereof. Um, secondly, we can look at issues uh, when members engage with the uh, uh, with the department. Um, there's a number of uh, targets in the APP of the department that relates to training for the SDMF. A lot of this is unlikely to take place, um, and perhaps the committee should be flexible in its oversight there, um, understanding that a number of these exercises, training exercises, won't be able to take place. Um, the current deployment that's going on in the SNF is also likely to impact on the secondary tasks. If you think about aspects such as maritime patrols, cybersecurity, and multinational exercises with other countries. Uh, these are all likely to fall by the wayside, or to a certain degree at least, because of the current deployment requirements. Um, another aspect that uh, might be impacted by COVID-19, and which we already spoke about in the previous uh, Joint Standing Committee of Defence meeting, relates to border safeguarding. Will there be any additional requirements? Um, in the previous meeting, it was stated that there's no additional companies deployed on the borders currently, um, but there's
Yes, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, uh, it will be interesting to to understand. What, what does that entail? How do they plan to do it? Uh, how does it relate with the budget? And uh, so many things. Uh, you mean the, 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 what agenda is that? The National Development Agenda. Oh, yes, yes, they yes, are, yes. Yeah, the contribution to the National Development Agenda. I mean, if they can unpack it for us, what does it mean? Does it mean the defense industry? Does it mean um, uh, dealing with the COVID-19? Uh, whatever it is, it will be very interesting to understand what it is and how they are going to do it. Okay. And maybe the highest uh, uh, ministerial cost in all the departments, uh, even that one, if they can unpack, I'm not very sure whether uh, maybe the president's aircraft is under minister. Well, I want to just to understand what 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 in, uh, entails such a very high cost. Okay. Thank you, thank okay. you, Chairperson. All right. Thank you so much, General Mackey. Uh, any other question or comment? Um, Brian, I'm still in the meeting. Hello, Brian. In the, indeed, Chair, I'm still in the meeting. Yes. Um, I guess we are recording this uh, this meeting, so you can the colleagues can go back uh, uh, reflect on on the comments and questions that members uh, are raising, isn't it? Uh, that is correct, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is it possible to lift these questions up, uh, uh, package them, and then send them to to the ministry, so that in their opening address, as they do their presentation, they speak to this uh, right up front, even before we ask them. Is, is that in order? That is in order, sir. Uh, that will be done. Yes, 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 yes. So, so that we save all the day. Yes, who's that, Mr. Ryder or Mr. Murray? Ray. Um, uh, Chairperson, I just want to follow up on that. I don't know if Bill Adam has responded to the Department of Military Veterans budget that is now separate for the first year, whether that is still provided within our budget or whether it is totally separate that we can say that what we have got, what we have provided, what they provided for us, is, is, is really for defense uh, and they will not take it away because that is kind of additional then for us if they if they have not take if they're not taking it away further thank you yes mr murray uh, dmv is a new vote altogether uh, they have a separate budget uh, so they stand on their own for the first time uh, this year all right uh, right, colleagues, uh, I think we have, uh, so what, what you do, Brian, is to lift up all the questions uh, that uh, the two colleagues uh, were raising, uh, and then include, and then add the questions that members are raising, send them to me so that I go through them, uh, so that we don't ask the obvious questions, all right? Once I'm satisfied that the questions are not obvious, we'll then send them to, to the ministry. So that on the day that they appear before us, uh, they talk to these questions uh, right up front as they do their presentations. Right? In other words, they integrate the answers to these questions uh, into their presentation, um, uh, as, it, as it were. Right, colleagues? Now that yeah. I think, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, yes, Mr. Mutra? Yes. Uh, um, I just want to 
add to your question that uh, it may not necessarily be in relation to uh, the presentation that I made, but uh, obviously it will uh, relate to budgetary uh, questions. Because if you might uh, have been following uh, in the media, there's an issue of a 37 million uh, fans. Uh, I'm not sure whether Vedem can clarify whether that fence was constructed under the defense force or was it a uh, home affair. But uh, insofar as I'm concerned, uh, what offense is the responsibility or is that in the border is the responsibility of the, the defense force. Uh, if we can also get clarity on that. All right. No, no, it's fine. Uh, we, we will add that. In other words, they must talk to, we'll ask them to talk to the, the, this 37 million rand uh, friends that got, uh, what happened? Um, got destroyed. Um, just talk to, I know, I know that it's under the, the Department of Public Works. But because they are that they are actually guarding the, the borderline, I'm sure they can say one or two words uh, on that and how, uh, with public works, they are dealing with, with the problem because it's got to be fixed. Uh, it's got to be fixed. So they would, uh, so we we'll ask them to talk to, to talk to that. Um, just give us we'll ask them to give us uh, information on the uh, discussion with public works uh, and maybe the border what let, let home affairs if home affairs is involved in the space uh, how they are uh, managing the whole thing any other colleagues all right when, when we meet with the department uh i've looked at their presentation right uh, so there is uh, uh, I'll ask them to zoom in on their uh, departmental imperatives. In other words, focus on the on, on their priorities and, and the focus areas. And and when it comes to the budget, I'll ask them only to uh, talk to uh, uh, outliers. You know, in other words, where there are significant uh, reduction or increase to the baseline uh, allocation. Uh, uh, and then three, uh, talk to the targets where there's been under, or where, no, no, where they are uh, posting, where they are reducing or increasing uh, the targets in, in this, in this uh, financial year. Like for instance, we know that uh, the flying hours have been a, a challenge, uh, sea hours have been a challenge, training hours have been a challenge so we will not let them go without talking to those um, uh, targets so because they remain a concern uh, to, to us and then the other point that the colleagues says was the the number of companies uh, on, on the border uh, 15 versus 22 we know why it is so and uh, but they may want to ventilate on that i know in the previous meeting they did say that um, the COVID-19 has given them a uh, space to kind of beef up uh, the, our borderline, uh, as, as it were. They may want to give us more details uh, on, on that uh, in, at the next meeting. And uh, colleagues, uh, maybe in the end, uh, I must say, yes, we have received uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, you know, sorry, the contribution of the Department of Defense to the fight against uh, COVID-19. So we want to see now uh, how this impact, how this impact on the budget. Two, we raise, still raise the issue of personal costs that it remains a concern to us. They are projecting a huge overexpenditure. I think it's 3.1 billion rand and uh, last year and, and, and then going forward. And then three, the force levels uh, in the context of uh, force rejuvenation. So we really ask them to talk to that as well. 
and then five, the acquisition given that the SDA, uh, the special defense account uh, is disappearing, uh, how they see themselves addressing uh, issues of uh, acquisition uh, within, within, the, within the defense force. And then the last point is the issue that <coughs> they raised uh, that they were trying to effect savings uh, through uh, effecting uh, cuts and, and be creative in some areas and, and how successful are they in, 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 doing, in doing that. Colleagues, in, 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 in short, uh, our meeting is not going to be long with them. I don't expect them to present the whole, to give us a whole presentation, but they focus on their focus areas, the minister's focus, focus areas, the sector focus areas, uh, the chief of the defense uh, focus areas. Once they are done with that, they take us through the budget and take us through the budget, they focus on the outliers where there are significant uh, you know, reductions and increase to the uh, uh, baseline allocations. And then in the end, they uh, you know, uh, talk us generally then we entertain, we then entertain discussions uh, with them. Are you happy with this approach, colleagues? I'm definitely fine order? with that. Is it in order? All right. So, yes. colleagues, it's, it's, it's that's correct. Fine. That's correct. All right, colleagues. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we had uh, a fruitful meeting. Uh, today because it, it was just a, a warm-up meeting for uh, Tuesday and, and Thursday. Because on, on, on Wednesday, we are dealing with the budget for the, the John, what you call the CASM and, and AMSCO. All right, with that, colleagues, I, it's my pleasure to uh, put the meeting uh, to the close, unless there's any other agent I think that you want to bring up before I close. The meeting is uh, adjourned. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.